Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, too, want to compliment both chairs uh, for their leadership in this budget process and say what a privilege it is to serve on this conference committee. And while we come across from the nation and our backgrounds vary, and we're here today as an important step toward governing in the way the American people expect. And today's meeting is a positive step in the right direction. And for the first time in a long time, there's a real possibility that both chambers of Congress will adopt a budget resolution for a balanced budget. This budget will set the guardrails for federal spending in the upcoming year, as well as the decade ahead. Families in my home state of Michigan understand that they need to tighten their belts and balance their budget when there's a change in household income or expenses. And that's something we need to do in Washington as well. This balanced budget will not raise taxes on the hardworking Americans, and it will keep the promises that have been made to seniors while slowing the soaring national debt. From our nation's founding, it took more than 200 years for the government to accumulate $5 trillion in debt. By 2008, the debt had doubled to $10 trillion. And in the last seven years, it has skyrocketed to $18 trillion. Divided among 320 million Americans, as been mentioned already, a child born today inherits $56,250 in debt. That's $225,000 for a family of four. Leaving less debt to our children is vital. And if we fail to act, debt payments will crowd out spending for the bipartisan priorities of the American people, including national security, medical research, programs to protect the Great Lakes, and funding for our roads and bridges. Our national debt is also costing us jobs because our debt to GDP ratio is over 90 percent, hindering economic growth and job creation. One way we can boost the slow economic recovery is tax reform, which has the potential to add one million new private sector jobs. This budget calls for tax reform, and many Americans just filed their tax returns ending another year that they had to deal with the long and complicated federal tax code. As my predecessor, Chairman Dave Camp, who many of you served with, he was fond of saying the tax code is bigger than the Bible with none of the good news. <laughs> Middle class Americans don't have time to read the code's 74,000 pages. And it's estimated that individuals, families, and employers spend more than $160 billion trying to comply with it every year. The tax code's complexities distort the decisions a couple makes when planning to save for retirement and leave middle class families hoping they filled out their return correctly and that the IRS will not audit them. For small business owners filing quarterly estimates, a better system cannot come soon enough. The federal tax code complicates their plans to expand and hire new workers. It also buries them under paperwork and pulls their time and talents away from running their businesses. The last major overhaul of the tax code was 29 years ago, long before the internet and cell phones gained widespread use. In this global economy, other nations have built their tax systems for the 21st century. Creators are being left at a competitive disadvantage. It's time for a better tax code that is simpler and fairer. More Americans will move up the economic ladder if the federal government makes it easier for families to pay their taxes and for entrepreneurs to have certainty of their costs. Again, this is the first time in a long time that a budget conference committee will meet to pass a balanced budget. This budget will boost the slow-growing economy, create jobs, raise wages, and build a more prosperous America. This budget addresses our country's fiscal problems in a responsible way and puts our nation on a brighter path for our children and our grandchildren. Thank you, and I yield back.